It's Jerry coming to you from Rhythmia Life Advancement Center in beautiful, and I mean it is a beautiful day, in downtown Guanacaste, Costa Rica. Who is Rhythmia? Rhythmia is a life advancement center that combines metaphysical teachings and plant medicine to bring about a particular type of healing called a soul merger. Most of you know about this, yeah, uh-huh. And, and we're pretty good at it. And by pretty good, what we mean is this, about 951 out of every thousand people who come here report that they had a life-changing miracle during their stay. That has made us the number one resort of any type on TripAdvisor, of any type. And the best part about this is six months later, 97.55% of those people are saying that this was the week that changed their life and the miracle still working in their life. Uh huh. So it's a really dynamic healing experience. And, and uh, even those who don't get the miracle, which is about, uh, about 40, 48 out of every thousand people, they start on a journey and that journey brings them either back to here to, to do it again or to higher places within their own life. Uh huh. So it's really, there are no losers. It's all winners and it's all uh, a, a unique kind of win. If, if win is uh, happiness, then that's, that's where it's going. Uh, happiness, self-discovery, awareness, that's where that goes. Uh -huh. And that's what we're about. Now, because we use plant medicine, the plant medicine that we use is called ayahuasca. Uh, it gives you some insight that can at times seem otherworldly. So what does that mean? So uh, in these journeys and March 24th, I, I made some predictions. I just want to go over them for one minute. Uh -huh. And some of the predictions I made was that the virus itself would have an infection rate of 17% and a, a, a death rate, a mortality rate of 0.26 to 0.86%. Now at that time, everybody was talking about 10% death rates. Uh huh. Interesting. On March 24th, I saw a vision of, of the Roaring Twenties coming back again, and I made that prediction. We'll see that in the end of this year, in the beginning of 2021, that, that people are going to come out of this with a pent-up demand for the acquisition of all things. And that's a pretty, it's a interesting and, and uh, important part of this process of what's happening. In March 20, on August 23rd, I made two predictions. The end of new infe infections in the United States between September 26th and October 6th, and then the end of new deaths in the United States between o October 1st and October 21st. And I still believe they're absolutely on track. Uh -huh. Not that there aren't new problems in the United States, as everybody's aware that there are, but the virus itself uh, that's rolled over and it's going to be completely over in the next 30 to 45 days. One thing that I say about masks and about uh, what, what, how people are reacting, I'm not saying that the virus isn't real or wasn't real. It absolutely was real and is real. Uh -huh. I'm saying that statistically, it's not what was being proffered. And there's probably some reasoning for that. I myself, every time I leave here and go outside of these gates, which isn't too frequently, wear a mask, not because I believe in any of it, but because if I can do something at no cost to me to make my brothers and sisters more comfortable, I'm gonna do it. That's a free one, right? So last week we talked about a lot of stuff. I have something really interesting this week and I'm asking you if you can do this, it would be great. If you can share this, if you think somebody uh, wants this, if you think somebody could use this, please press share because the rules at Facebook are constantly changing and they make it harder for us to get our message out. And by the way, I get more requests now than I ever get or got when we were open about when are you opening? When can I get there? When can I have this done? Because people have a lot of questions. And last week I spoke about questions in the medicine and, and, and what I've found in my own experience. 
a lot of time the medicine will ask questions or answer questions and a lot of times it leaves us more confused than we've ever been and and why is that well sometimes our mechanism for un trying to understand something is limited by the framework of our conscious mind and you're you're, you're starting from the finite and, and moving into the infinite and it gets confusing what it does do is it brings us more centered more joy more happiness i know a lot of people who do medicine and i know a lot who do a lot of medicine and and i had one guy who i dearly love he says i don't do this to learn shit. i do it because it regulates me uh -huh. very interesting thought right so anyway I talked about sometimes when we do the medicine, it makes us more confused than before. And yet in that confusion is peace and, and, and tranquility and honesty and love and clarity in that peace. Uh huh. Not so much that, that, you know, sometimes I get someone and they, I say, what do you want in this journey? And they say, I want to download Spanish. What <laughs> just crazy, crazy things. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. Uh huh. Sometimes it's meant to rock us so that it can make us aware of new things. One of the lessons from the medicine that was fantastic because every time I do medicine, I record what happened. Uh -huh. And I want to tell you, there's not a person here who knows me that will tell you that this is a lie. Every time I do the medicine, I'm afraid. Uh huh. Because I have an ego that constantly wants to creep back in. So every time I do the medicine, I'm afraid. And I want to... I want to tell you one of the one of the best ones I've ever had, uh -huh. because last week I talked about how the medicine teaches us and, and answers questions. And all of a sudden you get to see where you were from, what planet, what plane, what star. Uh -huh. And you think, oh, God, I know it all now. It shows you how the universe works, shows you how life works, shows you all this stuff. And you think you've got it all. And then it says, well, that's universe one. And, and they say, how many are there? A couple trillion. And then you realize that you don't know anything. So what do you know? You return back to love. This is the thing that we all know. A simple return back to love. All of those universes, all of this stuff, all of the stardust, star seeds, all of these things that people talk about is happening in this moment and in this moment only, only. Uh -huh. So what's one of the best lessons getting to this thing? So I, I was very confused during, during one journey and I was crying. And I was saying, talking about something that I was expecting to get that I didn't get and how broken I was because of this thing. And I was talking about this thing that I didn't get. And, and it showed me a picture of me being a kid. And when I was a kid, I wanted this kind of car and the car came in a box. And what did I end up playing with? I ended up playing and appreciating the box. Now kids do it, puppies do it. Uh -huh. You know when you get your puppy a toy and you throw the box out and you show them the toy and they don't want nothing to do with the toy, they only want the box and kids because kids understand something that's metaphoric with the, with the medicine. That the lessons, the gift is the box itself. The gift is the box itself. Well, so how does that relate to us? Uh, like people who are in companies. So if you're in a company, you own a company and you think, oh, this company is a means of getting money. And then you go and you sell the company. And what you miss, first off, you're disappointed with the money. Secondly, what you miss were those relationships. Uh huh. The relationships with the employees, the vendors, the suppliers, the customers. That's what you miss. That was the box. The money was the product. Uh -huh. The product is fucking worthless. The box is worth everything. Talk about school. Everybody's dying to get out of school. Dying to, right? When you're in, when you're in high school, you can't wait to leave that place. When you're in college, you can't wait to get your degree to get outside when you're in graduate school. And the whole thing, once you're out, all you cherish were school days. Uh huh. All you cherish was the box. The, the degree is the product, but the box is what you cherish. So like if we're going to learn stuff from the medicine, it's pretty easy stuff, right? So, so, and it really is easy. 
where, where in that journey where I got the most upset was that the medicine kept showing me different places in my life where I was focused on the product. Uh-huh. Like focused on the product instead of the box. And if you think about it, and here's, here's the beautiful part about plant medicine journeys. If we can mimic what happens in a journey for 10 minutes a day in our regular lives, we're going to have a huge increase in contentment. Not what I call happiness, but contentment. We're going to have a huge increase if we can mimic. So what, what does it tell me to do? All the time when I'm focused on something, it's, I go back to this journey and I say, is that the box or is that the product? If it's the product, I have to refocus. Uh huh. I want this person in my life to give me this. Wrong. The whole thing is this person in my life. The experience of that person in my life, no matter how bad it is, is the box. And the box holds all the value. Uh huh. Crazy, but absolutely positively true. So, what does this even mean? Well, you take out a pen and you, and this is it, you take out a pen, do a quick meditation or a quick breath work and get to starting to write things down that you're focused on. Write five things. Take 20 minutes and write five things that are your focus. Uh huh. And then take a look and see if they're the box or the product. And if they're the product, look one back this way to the box. Uh huh. This person won't do this for me. It's my focus instead of my relationship with this person. Uh -huh. It's all finite and it's all going away and the products are thrown away before next Christmas. Whatever is in that box gets used and thrown away and never gives the happiness that we thought it would. And then what are we looking for? In other words, you know, my grandparents gave me all these gifts at Christmas. Uh -huh. Not one of them can I remind, I might be able to remind myself of one, a radio. Uh -huh. That radio broke 40 some years ago uh -huh, and is gone. But then those grandparents were the box. The radio was the product, right? Do you see what I'm saying? It keeps going back. You just keep going back one and back one and back one. And, and I was thinking about this and I'm thinking, you know, that, that in my life right now, what, what is the product? Well, the product to me is the end of the coronavirus. That's the, the big gift I've been waiting for. The end of the virus so I can get back to the things that I love and the things that mean everything to me. Uh -huh. And then I thought about it. The virus is the box. This is the gift. Uh -huh. And if we look at it as the box, as the gift, then everything about how we're framing our lives right now changes. So what is the real gift? What is the box of the virus? The box of the virus is, is that it's doing two things. It's resetting our baseline. Uh huh. And I'll get into that in a second. And then it's pointing to what giving us an opportunity to really see what's valuable and, and important. Now I talked about that two weeks ago. Uh huh. It's giving us an opportunity to really see what's valuable and important. Now let's talk about resetting baselines. And this I find most interesting. So if you take a look at lottery winners, uh -huh, within seven years, 50% of all lottery winners file for bankruptcy. Why? Uh -huh. Because their baseline was not enoughness. And they got the money, but they never changed their baseline. And then their subconscious worked on making that baseline happen again. Uh -huh. That's how it works with people who can't adjust to the new baseline. When you do adjust to the new baseline, this is what happens. Uh, it's a Time Magazine. It's 81% of people who get a raise, uh -huh, four months later, are back to their same happiness baseline as they were before the raise. Why? Because the human body has, the human uh, person has the greatest ability to adapt to what's whatever is going on, like children playing in Kosovo during the, the, the war. Like we just have an ability to adapt and we have to watch that ability to adapt because uh, if we get addicted to the, to the act of having to adapt to what's new instead of 
the joy of what was or the joy of what the baseline is we get all confused so so this is my prediction of what's of what's happening and this is what the box is with with this virus i took it upon myself to to really do some work around this this feeling of emptiness because of the virus and then i got to the things that i really found important to me and make me happy and i suggest you do the same thing and this is where the trick three months after the virus is over uh-huh so i'm gonna say that's october november december january when everybody is having the time of their lives and spending money and da 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 all of a sudden that old uh the old thing this this the lessons we learned during the virus by about 90% of us will get thrown out in exchange for cheap thrills. For cheap thrills. What do I mean by cheap thrills? I mean we'll immediately return to excess. The excess of what cannot make us happy. Uh-huh. Cheap thrills, you know, alcohol, uh, parties, da 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 da. Not, not that those things are bad un, uh, unto themselves, uh, they're a necessary part of life, but we will forget what made us important, what, what was important when we had nothing. That human interaction, love, connection with our families, connection with our friends, true, and not, not connection like, let's have 15 beers and, you know, whatever. I'm talking about true connection with our friends. Dude, I appreciate you. Uh, I appreciate you. You mean something to me. The kind of calls we have when we talk to our parents now, when we talk to our children now, the talks of, you know what? I'm so sorry I forgot how much you meant to me. Uh-huh. So the, the, the box of this thing is the virus. The product we were expecting is the end of the virus. The, the product, the, the, the benefit of the whole thing was returning to what's important. So, so this whole virus was the box of a great gift. It was the box of a huge gift. And I have to tell you, if you didn't do these, th this type of work during this time, you did yourself a great disservice because by January, February, March of next year, when this is just something that will be talked about for generations, but the feeling tone of it is gone. Uh-huh. So what I'm going to talk about is that too. You know, uh, children of the depression, they talked about the depression, but the feeling tone was gone. Uh-huh. The feeling tone was gone. Uh, women talk about the pain of having a baby, and then they're immediately pregnant again. You know, if, if, uh, if you were to poll mothers during birth as to whoever would have a baby again, I guarantee you, it would be 99% no. Uh-huh. And yet everybody gets pregnant and has another baby. Uh-huh. So what I'm telling you is that the feeling tone of pain goes away. Some of us are going to benefit from the lessons of that time. Some of us are going to rearrange our deck to make sure that we stay to what's important to our soul, to our core happiness, not to our ego, not to these other things, to our real center of our center. And those people will have a level of contentment that will be a result of the coronavirus that they never had experienced before. So look at, this is, this is the greatest gift. This thing was given to us to, to reset our baseline to something much lower and much simpler. Uh-huh, and it did. Now our baseline will get reset again once things get better. But the smart of us, the aware of us, and I'm not going to use the term woke because I don't like it. And it represents a lot of things that are not uh, reflective of awareness. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So, but those who are aware and those who want to learn will take this and will be thankful for the next 30 years of our lives that this coronavirus happened thankful in in real true thanks because we all have the opportunity to restructure our life to make 
our happiness quotient, which is the wrong word, our contentment quotient, uh -huh, much higher than it ever was before. Much higher. Uh -huh. So what are some of those things? They're different to everybody, but I know where they come from. They come from loving. So if, if you go through this thing, anybody who does the work and sits there and asks them what makes themselves happy, it's always giving, uh -huh. the gift of giving. Giving, 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 giving. Then when, when abundance is around us, we start to uh, worry about taking. And once that shifts from giving to taking, our happiness, our contentment goes right down. Uh -huh. So giving, family, love, relationships, those are what's important. That is the truth of the truth. And if you get through this whole thing and don't get that lesson, you, you got shortchanged. Then what you had, you had pain and no benefit. Pain and no benefit. And that's a terrible way to be. A terrible, terrible way to be. So, I love you guys. I want to thank you for this opportunity to speak to you. I want to see you at Rhythmia soon. I want you to, to have a happier, more fulfilling life. I want, I want you to experience joy. I want you to experience these beautiful relationships. And then really take a look in gratitude for what's coming. The ability to touch our friends, to hug our family, to go see people we've been unable to see. This is the gift. Uh huh. Please take it. Please do the right thing with it. And we will see you at Rhythmia. Have a wonderful, beautiful, and sacred week. Cheers.